Hey there and welcome to Cinema Recap. Today we're going to take a look at The Scythian, a Russian adventure film released in 2018. So the story opens in the tavern, with a band of Scythians completing a successful assassination. One of the Scythians, a man named Martin, single-handedly murdered six men with ease. They ride out when the mission's accomplished, showing little remorse. Now elsewhere, a diplomatic envoy from the neighboring kingdom of Kiev meets Lord Oleg at the border of his territory. They bring regards from their own lord, and Oleg invites the envoy to stay as guests in his court. Now one of Oleg's faithful men, Ludibor, sees a masked assassin try to shoot Oleg and protects him from an arrow with his shield. Now he quickly takes down that assassin, saving the lord's life. Oleg thanks him when suddenly a horse and rider appear on the horizon carrying news that Ludibor's wife has given birth. So he gets on the guy's horse and rides home just as the midwife comes out to announce that Tatiana has birthed a healthy son. So you have a son? Yes, my lord. Now a week later, the lord arrives at Ludibor's residence and has to see his newborn. Oleg gives him a sword, and Ludibor demonstrates his excellent swordsmanship with it. A man named Kume asks if Ludibor is as good in real battle, and then they're allowed to wrestle it out, with Ludibor crowned the victor. Enough! Kume, now embarrassed by the defeat, commandeers a horse and rushes away. Ludibor worries that he may now have a new enemy, and Oleg leaves to attend to his princely duties. Later, after the party, Tatiana is stitching up a cut that Ludibor sustained when she hears the baby crying and goes out to check on it. The midwife appears in the doorframe, her throat cut open and gushing blood. She gasps, realizing they're being attacked, and rushes for her baby, but the kidnappers already have him. She's screaming, alerting Ludibor, but is then captured by another man. Ludibor races out and attacks one of them, who we recognize as Martin from earlier in the movie. But he's too late to save her and his kid, who are thrown onto a horse and carted away. Now his fellow tribesmen hear the noise and come running, but there's nothing they can do. Lock him up! Prove, a servant, finds out that the man who Ludibor fought with is still alive, so they lock him up for questioning. The kidnappers have left a slip of parchment on Ludibor's door, and after reading its contents, he heads out to see Lord Oleg. Now the Lord's hosting a party at his fort when Ludibor enters, requesting a private audience with Oleg. Once alone, he takes out the script of parchment out of his pocket, explaining that the kidnappers want Lord Oleg's death in exchange for his wife and son. The ransom letter came with a sachet of powdered poison, which they want Ludibor to use on Oleg. Well, the Lord asks him if he would kill him to save his wife, but he replies that his duty to his Lord comes before his personal relations. Pleasing Oleg, they leave the private chamber and go to the main hall, where Oleg toasts in Ludibor's honor. Suddenly, the Lord begins to choke, and then points at Ludibor, claiming that he poisoned the glass. Kume searches his pockets and finds the sachet of poison, holding it up for all to see. Well, the facts seem to add up, and the crowd condemns him to death for treason. Meanwhile, the Scythians take Tatiana to their village. It seems that they worship an animal god, and the skulls of wolves are prominently displayed throughout the village. Tatiana holds her baby close, but the kidnappers were tasked not to harm her. The Scythians believe Martin to be dead, and a man named Yar says that he's glad because Martin was strong enough to replace him as leader of the tribe. Meanwhile, Ludibor is being whipped for his alleged crimes when Oleg enters the execution room. In private, he explains that he staged the poisoning so it would seem to the kidnappers that Ludibor completed his task and successfully killed Oleg, which would mean they would give his wife and child back. The poison that was in the parchment was powdered hemlock, a substance that takes seven days to kill off its victim. Thus, while loosening the chains, Oleg tells him that he has seven days to save his family. With this, he leaves. The executioner comes back to continue his whipping, but Ludibor now can break the chains and attacks the executioner. He escapes on foot, rushing to his house. By the time he gets there, it's night. He covertly signals to Prove, asking him where the captive kidnapper is. Come in here, man. And he leads him to Martin, explaining that he believes Martin is a wolf of Perrin, a tribe of hired assassins. So he goes up to Martin, who's tied up, and interrogates him. Martin's trying to apologize, but Ludibor is not believing him. 
Before releasing him, he makes Martin promise that he'll help him rescue Tatiana and her newborn son. And then they slip away from the house just as Lord Oleg's men, with Kume leading, arrive on horseback. They question Prove on the location of his master, and he lies, saying that he hasn't seen him at all. Now, Ludobor and Martin sneak into an ancient temple that has a statue of Martin's supposed god, Perrin. He forces Martin to swear before it that he will help him get his wife and son back. But a sinister voice from above starts crackling. He prays to a different god. The voice says that Martin's oath has no value because he prays to a different god. We find out that Martin's from an ancient tribe that prays not to Perrin, but to Ares. And they swear oaths not to statues, but swords washed in blood. Now the voice belongs to a guardian of the temple, and the guardian proceeds to attack him. Martin, who's proven himself as a skilled fighter, moves quickly, easily killing the guardian before Ludobor can even process what's happening. Afterwards, Ludobor takes the sword drenched in the guardian's blood and makes Martin swear on it. He begrudgingly does so, but as soon as Ludobor's back is turned, Martin strangles him with a length of rope. However, after a few seconds, he notices the statue of Perrin leering above them and stops. He asks why Martin didn't strangle him to death, given that he had the opportunity. And Martin's over here explaining he doesn't want to disgrace Ares in front of Perrin, and thus he'll honor his word. So now Ludobor and Martin stop before a group of merchants, who've set up camp for the night. One of the merchants, a man named Troyan, recognizes Ludobor and offers some food and rest. Troyan tells him that Lord Oleg has a grand reward for anyone who brings him in, but Troyan's not going to hand him over, as they have a shared family history. Ludobor plans to stay at the campsite for the night, and he'll take two of Troyan's horses in the morning. Meanwhile, back at the kidnapper's camp, Tatiana makes an escape attempt, but is quickly foiled. A man tries to hurt her, but a village elder, Anagast, appears and forces him to stop. Now when Ludobor wakes up in the morning, all the men at the camp are dead by Martin's hands. The merchant's still alive. Except Troyan, who lies bleeding on the ground. We find out that Troyan was planning on sending a messenger to Oleg during the night in order to collect the rewards. Troyan's begging for his life, but Martin kills him anyway. Back at the village of Scythians, Tatiana stays close to Anagast the Elder as he goes about his duties for the day. He tells her that she'll be given to the man who paid for her capture, and her son will either die or join the ranks of the wolves, trained to be a mercenary from infancy. So with the horses they'd taken from camp, Martin and Ludobor are traveling through the forest. Ludobor asks him how he can kill innocent people without an ounce of remorse, when an arrow suddenly whizzes past. It seems that Oleg's men have caught up with him. The chase is on as they ride through the forest and down a cliff. The terrain seems too rocky to continue on horseback, so they're forced to run by foot. But Ludobor takes an arrow to the leg and can't move fast enough to evade the warriors. The duo are outnumbered, and Ludobor's odds of survival are getting even worse when Martin suddenly disappears, forcing him to continue onwards alone. The men follow Ludobor's obvious tracks through the forest, but are picked off one by one as Martin stealthily assassinates him. Nice. Five men are left, with Kume leading when Ludobor reaches a dead end. Kume makes the other man wait. He wants to face Ludobor alone. Well, they fight, and although Ludobor's strength is compromised by his injured leg, he still manages to defeat Kume. Martin then appears and takes down the remaining few men. So now Martin's leading him to the edge of a river and helps patch up his arrow wound. They begin to refill their canteens and drink from the river when upstream, a clawed hand taints the water with poison. Martin, just before falling unconscious, tries to warn Ludobor, but it's too late, and they both pass out. So now the two awake to find themselves strung upside down, surrounded by forest people who worship the god Velus. We find out that they're being sacrificed to Berende, a strong-looking monster of a man. However, the forest people's chief sees the necklace Ludobor wears and exclaims that they can't sacrifice people of his religion and so, only Martin's tossed into the ring to fight against Baron Day. The war drums are beating as Baron Day drinks some sort of liquid that forces him into berserker mode, and then he leaps into the ring where Martin's trapped. 
Martin struggles to evade Baron Day as Ludobor is managing to get free of the ropes that are binding him. Once free, Ludobor drinks that same liquid that Baron Day drank. Gives him that same trance-like fury. And with that, he jumps into the fighting match and attacks him. They fight off with Martin concussed in the corner. And Ludobor violently tears him apart, unable to control himself. He then climbs out and begins attacking the other forest people as they scatter. Now, when Martin climbs out of the fighting ring, he finds Ludobor drenched in blood and sobbing. With the effects of the drug dying down, Ludobor realizes how many innocent people he just killed and is disgusted with himself. They return to the riverbed to wash up, and Martin believes that Ludobor has awoken a secret gift inside himself the ability to draw upon bear like strength in battle. He explains that it was just the liquid that caused the frenzy, but Martin insists that the gift is now stirred up and will return once again. Why aren't you happy, Ludobor? As they're arguing, a man sneakily sees the two and darts away. So now the two men continue onwards on foot. When they get close enough to the Ares worshipper camp, Martin attempts to blindfold Ludobor, as it's customary when they're attacked. The attack is cut short by intrusion of more tribesmen, Anagast included who are shocked to discover that Martin isn't dead like Yar said he was. I'll tell you! Enraged that Yar proclaimed him dead, Martin challenges him to a battle for the position of leader of the wolves. They're taken to the center of the village in front of the statue of their god Ares, and Yar accepts Martin's challenge. Ludobor sees Tatiana and assures her that everything will be alright. Now Ludobor tells Anagast that he's poisoned Lord Oleg, and thus, with the terms of the kidnapping fulfilled, demands his wife and child back. We didn't have an agreement with you. But Anagas is confused, stating that he didn't leave any poison or parchment. In fact, the wolves don't even know how to read or write, and they only kidnapped Tatiana because the man paying for it told them to. Ludobar's like, who's this man? But Anagas isn't telling him. So now Ludobar is held imprisoned in the camp, and Martin's given him food. He explains that the fight between him and Yar will decide his fate. If Martin wins, he can have him freed when he's the leader. Ares decides who will lead. But if he loses, then Ludobar is going to be killed and his wife given to the man who paid for her kidnapping. Martin assures him that he'll kill Yar, as he is far stronger. Now the match between the two begins at night. A ring of fires formed around the prospective leaders, and with just a dagger each. They fight to the death. Everyone, including Tatiana and the imprisoned Ludabar, watch on as they fight. And we find out that Yar killed Martin's father to become pack leader. Martin looks like he's about to win, but at the last second, Yar stabs him violently in the stomach. Martin crashes to the ground, choking on his blood as he dies. With Yar victorious, Anagas asks if anyone will challenge him as leader. I will challenge him. Nothing to lose. Ludabar rises to the challenge, but outsiders are not allowed to become leaders. However, lightning flashes overhead, and Anagas takes that as a sign from Ares, allowing the challenge to be made. Yar accepts the challenge, and Ludabor is brought forth. Now the two men begin their battle, and initially it seems that Ludabor is no match for the brutal Yar, who's tossing him around pretty easily. Yar nails Ludabor's hands to the wheels of a carriage, and when Tatiana rushes into the ring, Yar grabs her and licks her face. The sight enrages Ludobor so much that suddenly his vision goes red and a bear-like growl emanates from him. He tears his hands free and attacks Yar viciously. His rampage continues until Tatiana appears in front of him and gently touches his face, causing him to collapse. Suddenly, when he wakes up, he's in a foreign hut. And when he walks outside, everyone in the village bows to him as the new leader. Anagas appears, walking Ludobor to the breakfast table, while explaining that the villagers are forced to be assassins because they aren't under the protection of any lord or leader. Ludobor strikes a deal with Anagas, offering Lord Oleg's protection to the tribe if Anagas will tell him the identity of the person who paid for Tatiana to be kidnapped. He also reveals that Lord Oleg is alive and well, only pretending to be poisoned because of the parchment that Ludobor thought the tribe left behind after the kidnapping. Anagast accepts the bargain. We can help with that. The mysterious man that paid for Tatiana comes to take her, but is tricked when the tribe gives him Ludobor instead. Well, he attacks the man and takes him to Lord Oleg. 
At the Lord's home, we find out that the man who tried to have Oleg murdered is none other than his own son, goaded on by the Kiev envoy. The boy's Oleg's only son, and so he has no choice but to forgive him. Now Oleg's son goes to meet with the Kiev envoy, who are enjoying their time being entertained in Oleg's court, and tells him that his father has succumbed to the poison and died. The envoys congratulate him as the new lord of Tematerikin. But then, Oleg appears, and kills everyone in the envoy before beheading his son as well. The scene cuts to Oleg and Ludibor riding out across the plains, sometime later. Ludibor thanks him for taking the last Scythians, the tribe that Ludibor is now the leader of under his protection. He leads Oleg to the tribesmen's secret location, when suddenly, a legion of Oleg's army appears, and shoots every last one dead. Ludibor tries to help, but he's held back by two burly guards. Tell me why, Lord. And is forced to watch this massacre. Lord Oleg is glad to be done with the matter, stating that he's wanted the Scythians dead for a very long time, as they were dangerous bandits with a strange religion. Ludibor is disgusted by Lord Oleg's sudden display of cruelty towards hundreds of innocents, and tells Oleg that he'll no longer be his subject before riding away on his horse. When he goes, Kumai's father asks Oleg if he can hunt Ludibor down for killing his son. Oleg approves, and a dozen men leave the ranks to go kill him. Now a few miles away, Ludibor notices these men on horses following him, but isn't worried in the slightest. He calmly dismounts from his horse, unsheathes his sword, and prepares for their attack. And that's the end. Now the movie ends on that cliffhanger, but... I think we're pretty sure Ludibor is going to be strong enough to survive that situation, right? Let us know in the comments what you think happens next with that hashtag cinema recap. Till next time.